Hello, I'm A. D. Hobbs, and this is, well, this is like a little history lesson thing here. Um, in the year 1215, that was the year of the Magna Carta. And I don't know, that was, um, the reason why I'm doing this is because whenever something's a nice round number, it's a big deal. If something's 50 years old, it's a big deal. If it's 100 years old, it's a big deal. If it's 200 years old. In this case, 1215 was 100 year uh, 100. 800 years ago. So that's a nice round number, 800. I don't know the precise date, I just know the year, 1215. So 1215 was the year of the Magna Carta, 800 years ago. And I do remember at school once getting a, you know, a star, in my, um, a class mark, because um, I remember the exact year, 1215, I got it exactly right. So yes, I was pleased about that. Anyway, so I'll give my thoughts on the Magna Carta. Um, well, basically, the Magna Carta is a document that King John was forced to sign to make a fairer system, to make a fairer tax system, to stop treating the people so badly. And, um, OK, a bit of backstory about King John. Um, well, originally he was known as Prince John because, of course, King Richard, King Richard I, also known as King Richard the Lionheart, he was king for ten years, 1189 to 1199, but because he was away so much in the Crusades fighting the, the Muslims, um, or was it the Turks, or was it both? Were the Turks Muslims at the time? Anyway, it was it was about religion, basically, yes. A war about religion. And to get all the Muslims out, or Moors as they used to call them back then, and make, well, make everyone Christian, basically. You fought to make everyone Christian. You'd kill anyone that was not Christian. That was the customary thing to do in the Middle Ages. And um, he did come back to England a, a few times, but when he came back, King Richard spent a total of only six months in his entire reign. You know, <laughs> so, so for the majority of his reign, he wasn't here. So his younger brother, John, as Prince John then, was the regent. And Prince John was a horrible, creepy, grubby little, little sneak, basically. He plotted against his father to, to become king. He couldn't wait. You know, he wanted his father dead, so wanted to get rid of him. But um, And then afterwards, his father did die, but because later he was plotting against his elder brother. But he didn't really need to plot against him because he was away all the time, you know. So Prince John... Yes, Prince John had the legal right to raise the taxes because they needed more money for the war effort. But he abused the system. He made out that the government needed far more than they actually did, whereas really he just wanted all the money for himself, you know. He robbed the poor to feed the rich, you know. He was just, you know, there was just no limit to how much money he, he charged for. You know, he was absolutely despicable. And, of course, Prince John, because of Robin Hood, Prince John is famous. Or infamous, I think is the correct word to use. Yes, Robin Hood rebelled against him and robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. And Prince John didn't like this at all because I'm the king. I can do whatever the heck I like. And Robin Hood was like, well, you're not the king, though, are you? <laughs> you're just the regent. You're supposed to be ruling wisely and well. And there are many different versions. Uh, different historians give different accounts of this. Some say, that the version that perhaps everyone's familiar with because of TV and films, in one version, King Richard comes back to the crusade, puts everything back the way it should be, and makes it a just and fair system. That's what we're all familiar with. But there are some historians that say, no, that's not what happened at all. What happened was, King Richard did come back to England a few times, yes. And what happened? Prince John, his younger brother, just lied to him and said, I've been ruling all the people wisely and well, and everyone's perfectly happy. And King Richard believed him, you know. <laughs> and they're, OK, I can see you're doing a good job. Well, I'll go back to the Crusades. <laughs> so, yes. King Richard, was he stupid? Was he a bit naive? Or was he just so busy that he didn't have the time to make sure everything was all right? You know, he didn't look after his people, you know. You've got to be there for your people. You've got to physically be there to know what's really going on. You can't just take someone's word for it, you know, because... Because Prince John was a liar and a cad. Then King Richard got killed in a battle in Jerusalem, or was it Iran or Persia or Iraq or... Well, anyway, one of the desert countries. It might have been Turkey. Well, anyway, in one of the countries where he was fighting, he was killed in a battle. And because he didn't have any children, that meant his younger brother was the heir to the throne. He was no longer Prince Regent. He was King John, 
He was the legal ruler of the whole, of the, the lord of all the realm. He was no longer the stand, and he was the proper king. And um, but did he good, do a good job? No, he was absolutely horrendous. If anything, he was worse because there was nothing holding him down. Now you know there were no, there was no limit to how cruel and horrible he'd be. He charged much too much money. He raised the taxes even more. You know, and it was absolutely horrendous. You know, and um. Robin Hood, again, in most movie versions, Robin Hood saves the day and makes everything back to normal, but that's not what really happened. What really happened was, eventually, Robin Hood was killed in a battle with his rebels rebelling against this corrupt government, and he died. But before he died, he said to his people, never give up the fight. Even though I'm dead, the legend carries on. You know, the fight for freedom carries on. You know, And for me, Robin Hood, I suppose, to most people, he was... Yes, an outlaw of a twist. He was an outlaw. He did things against the law, but he was the good guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he rebelled against an evil king. I mean, you must obey the king. You must do whatever he says. What if the king is evil? You know, I mean, how? where does it stop? You know, if the people in, in power, people in government are evil, that's different. If that's the case, the rebels are goodies, not baddies. And, um... King John carried on reigning supreme, but the, the mistake he made, well, he made many, many mistakes, but one of his mistakes was he taxed the rich much too much as well. So it was not just the poor that hated him. By the 13th century, it was the rich and the poor hated him. Everyone hated him. Everyone absolutely despised him, you know. And it was the barons that, that rebelled against him next, you know. Then a whole army of people got hold of King John, and they wouldn't kill him because of religious reasons at the time. You know, it was deemed a crime against God to assassinate a king. So instead, they locked him in a prison cell, gave him the Magna Carta, a solemn document that you have to write down. And basically what it is, it's saying to make the system fairer, to make the tax system fairer, to treat the people more fair. And they wouldn't let him out. They would not let him out of that room until he signed it. So he was in there for days and days. You know, he thought eventually they'll crack and they'll let me go, but they wouldn't, no, they wouldn't let him go until he signed it. Eventually he did sign it, so everyone was happy, that's it, fairer, better England again. And then about a year later, he started being mean, cruel and horrible again. So he was, he was very quick to break his promise, yeah, that, that sounds like King John, yes. And then he was forced to abdicate, he had to give up his throne and they put a different king on the throne. So he was no longer king, but the instant he was no longer king, he stole the crown jewels. Now, you see, under the law, only the current king is allowed to own the crown jewels, the royal treasures. So he stole them. <laughs> well, that's a crime against the country, stealing the crown jewels. But he did. He stole the crown jewels. All these soldiers chased after him on horse and carts and everything. Get him back. You can't have the crown jewels. You have no right to have them. You're not the king anymore, you know. King John stole the crown jewels, and he managed to escape with his life, but the jewels, the cart, fell off, or more specifically, the, jewel, the jewels fell off, and they landed in a big bog, and sank underground. And because the, the bog was, was almost like quicksand, it sinks so easily, nobody could recover the jewels. And those royal crown jewels are still in that bog now, to this day. <laughs> so the last thing King John is known for is stealing the crown jewels. And uh, yes, he was a, a creep, you know, he kept pushing the limits to what he could get away with and he just went too far. It was no longer a question of the poor hating him, the rich hated him as well, he was absolutely horrendous. And there's only ever been one King of England called John. You know, I mean, John is a, still a very popular name in England, but there's only ever been one King called John. Maybe it's because King John was so notorious, he was like the worst leader ever. Um, other kings don't want to be associated with him. So he's not King John the First, he's King John the Worst, you know. And, um, but I don't know, maybe they should have another king called John, you know, break this stigma, you know, stop having that name associated with him. Let's have another king called John that's a good king, you know. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. It's a bit like when Prince William and, and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, when they, they've had two children, but when they're their first child... Baby boy, okay, next in line to the throne. What are they going to call him? They're going to call him George. And my reaction was, what, another George? You know, 
There's already been six kings of England called George. Can we please call him something else? But no, they won't, you know. Yeah, like, let's have another John. Or let's have another Stephen. There's only ever been one King Stephen, you know. Or, why don't we just have a name that's never been used before? Yeah, that sounds about right. A brand new name that no King of England's ever been called before. But no, they, they it's a family tradition, having the family names. Well, naming people after someone else is all very fine, but it gets a bit silly when there's no originality at all. Let's have a new king with a new name, you know. <laughs> but there we are. Okay, I'll, I'll sum up this Magna Carta by saying... In the Middle Ages, there were, laws were connected with religion, and they used to believe a king was chosen by God. He wasn't chosen by God, he was chosen by luck. But anyway, they, that's what they used to believe, he was chosen by God. They thought if a king touched your head when you're feeling ill, you will magically become better again. <laughs> that, that's what they used to believe. And they thought it's all part of God's grand plan, you know, he chooses who should be the king. However, they had standards. Even in the Middle Ages, people had standards. And they would never take their beliefs that far. In other words, if a king was awful, absolutely abysmal, like the worst leader in the world, they overthrew him. They got rid of him. So even people that with those really rigid religious beliefs, even they had standards. And they overthrew John. They didn't kill him. They forced him to sign the Magna Carta. That didn't work. So they forced him to abdicate instead. He was one of the worst kings England has ever had. But it made Robin Hood a legend, you know. <laughs> yeah, because he was so horrible, that inadvertently made Robin Hood a legend, and is still a legend to this day. Robin Hood, the mirror opposite of King John. And, um, yes, the Magna Carta basically means a just and fair system. And there is no historical monument to the Magna Carta in England. There should be one, but there isn't. You know, 800 years ago? No, nope, still, no, not after all this time, still no monument, you know. Uh, but there is, however, one in America. Why? Well, because the Americans believed in what the Magna Carta resent, what it resembled. They believed in what it resembled. The idea of everyone has their say. Like, you do need a leader in any given society, yes, but the people have to have their say. If the leader can just do anything without their consent, then that's wrong. That's not a good leader. A leader, a good leader gives the people what they want. A good, The good leader... Um, has to ha ha everyone has to have their say. Uh, he can't just do whatever he wants, you know, end of, you know. How can a leader know what the people want if no one's allowed to say anything, you know? <laughs> so in other words, the Magna Carta represents all the people have their say. We need a leader, yes, but all the people should have their say in the matter. Okay, so the Magna Carta, 1215, 800 years ago, and it's still relevant today. So, in other words, it's very important to be a good leader. Okay, that's enough from me, and take care.